Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Um, real pleasure to be here. I, I'm going to talk about something which is uh, slightly different to what we've been talking about so far. I'm, I'm going to be talking about something that we have termed personal infrastructure and how computing might evolve in the future and what this might therefore mean for communications and for, for networking and all of that. So I'm really going to give you a kind of view from a, a, a few thousand, a million miles away from where hey, we've Kino, been talking Kino. so far. And then I'll talk Kino, a little bit Kino. about the company that Kino. I represent. Hey, um, Phil. <laughs> this presence. This is a, an example of presence, voice and presence. Um, I'll, give you, I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing as a company and uh, the solutions that we've come up with. Um, and I hope there'll be enough time for us to have a bit of discussion, because I'd love to get your feedback on this. I think one of the problems that we are looking at, the problem space that we're looking at is, you know, we're living in a world where we have all these devices, we have an enormous amount of content on all these devices, but all our devices just don't talk to each other. And that to get them to connect together, to kind of network your home, or to get all the content that you have in all these different devices which are buried in silos of applications or whatever, it's a real nightmare to try and get this all to talk to each other. Our devices don't talk to each other. We can't get our stuff and use our stuff in the way that we'd like to. Um, to go back to the food analogy, we can't just go into the kitchen, put a few ingredients together and create something. To do that today with our devices requires an enormous amount of effort on your part uh, of getting round barriers of the way things are constructed, the constraints that are put upon you by, your, by the device, by the operator, by the, 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 the handset manufacturer, or whatever. It's like we're really shackled in everything we do. We are constrained in our behavior and what we would like to do with all of these devices. And I think this is a, a major area of frustration. It's like you know, we're, we, we're forced into wheelchairs, and then there's trees that block our way. The, the wheelchairs are what our operators, the network operators, or the, 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 the mobile operators, or the handset manufacturers prescribe what we can and what we can't do, and how, how, we, how we have to use these devices or whatever. What we're trying to do is to get over this. It's the kind of, you know, the nightmare scenario where you get somewhere, you can't make kind of connectivity. It's a bit like being in this room uh, trying to connect to the internet um, at, you know, at, at the moment with, with, with the Wi-Fi. It's an absolute nightmare. You know, we, we've all been there. We've all kind of felt like this. You know, we want to join together with our friends and just scream. And just, you know, th th this is the pain that we really have to take out of our, our, our lives. But there's another fundamental reason why I think this is a key uh, problem to solve for the future. And that has to do with what I call the generational impulse. Now, some of you might be familiar with some of the research that um, I have done in particular on digital kids and why they engage with, 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 with technology and what they therefore will become as customers in the future and the kinds of people that they are. I'm just going to re reiterate a little bit about that because I think it's important just for you to get the context of what I'm talking about. Now, this is the kind of society that our kids are growing up in. You know, we're, scientists are scared of our chickens. I mean, what chance do our children have? You know, if, if we're going to lock up our, chi our, our chickens, you know, we're growing up in a risk society where the kids today are growing up in an environment which is very, very different to, say, for example, the way the society that I grew up in. The society that I grew up in, you know, I would come home from school, my mother used to say, get the hell out of the house, I don't want to see you till dinner. Can you imagine that happening today in, 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 in our society? You come home from school, if you're going to interact with any other kids, mom, mom or dad is going to drive you there, and the other parent is going to be um, at, at, at that home. That kids today are growing up in the presence of adults far more than they ever have in the past. I think this is a very key point, because you will discover that the, one of the fundamental reasons why children are so attracted to digital technology is because through technology they are able to create some autonomy and a, some space for themselves where they can be kids and do the kinds of things that young people have to do as they're going through life stages, as they're going through those changes, those very fundamental changes of being children, um, uh, teenagers, young adults, uh, adolescents, and then young adults. So kids are more in the presence of their parents than they've ever been. And this means that you know, the kids are constrained in ways that we were never constrained. And so the technology becomes very attractive to them. 
And I would argue that the, it's, it's a very self-conscious thing that the kids are doing now, that they, they really are facing a problem of, ex, of self-expression, of being able to do an experiment with identity, with the, the kinds of spaces that all kids need, and we all need it as we went through life stages. And that's why, for example, you'll find, you know, it's not a big surprise to me that a site called MySpace, a, a kind of service called MySpace, becomes so um, uh, uh, important. You know, everyone thinks it's about the technology. It's got nothing, actually very little to do with the technology. It's got to do with the fact that in real life, the space for children to express themselves, their space no longer exists or has been so confined that they now look for mice, they create my space in the virtual world, in the online world.